Hi, my name is Ed Diaz, and today we're going to unlock the mysteries of the D-Beam. Many of us have D-Beams on a lot of uh, different rolling products, but we're not quite sure what's it for. In my opinion, it's for live performance. It's a feature that's on many rolling products that will really help bring in your audience to what you're doing. So, so not only do they hear what you're playing, but they, they can actually see and hear as your hand... Uh, triggers the D-Beam for various functions. So today we're going to actually learn how to program the D-Beam and utilize it in live performance. First let's find where the D-Beam is located. So if we're just here on the screen, if we just go just to the left, pan just to the left, you will see the D-Beam is right here. So here is the D-Beam panel and today we're going to discuss how we can program it. The first one is the pad trigger. When the D-beam is broken over here, it will allow you to trigger whatever you have in the dynamic pad bank, be it samples or certain drum beat, instrument, whatever. So that's what pad trigger will do. The next one is solo synth. The solo synth gives you two oscillators which you can program to react however you want. So the pitch, the, the detuning, everything right here. So that's solo synth. And this could be a lot of fun, especially in some electronica type music. The next choice is assignable. Assignable allows you to assign a multitude of MIDI functionality to the D-Beam. Maybe tap tempo, maybe the overall volume of the keyboard. A lot of different functionality. So we'll take a look at that one in just a second as well. Now let's get into editing the D-Beam. First thing I'll need to do is I'll need to find the shift button which is just to the right of the screen right here and I'll hold this down and I'll select one of the D-beam options on the left side so I'll hold down shift and then I'll hit you know hit pad trigger and it'll bring me up to the following screen so hold down shift and now hit pad trigger and now I get this screen. It tells me that the D-beam switch is off so I need to touch the pad trigger on the D-beam and light it up and now you see I get a lot of different options over here. So if I use my cursor which is just right here, I'll cursor down one and it'll say well since this is the pad trigger what pad do you want to trigger? So there's all my pads and remember this could be used for samples or whatever mode I'm in. So it doesn't matter because remember the pad mode does a lot of different things. So I could use it to trigger certain chord memories, maybe a rhythm. Uh, most commonly I use it for sample pads to trigger samples live. So if I press the enter button, you see I have a choice of 16 different pads because there's 16 different pads. So I can go ahead and select any one of them. Beam trigger velocity, that's how hard the D-beam, that's what volume it will trigger that pad at. Okay, So it's just like me hitting the pad at a certain volume. So you can see I can set it for any number. So I usually set mine at 127 because my pads are already preset to the volume. So I wanted to hit it at full volume. Next one is I get two options here. In the trigger mode, I get momentary or latch. Momentary means that when I break the beam, it will only trigger the pad for as long as I am breaking the beam. Latch means when I break the beam, it's like I turned on the switch and it won't turn off until I break the beam again. So, let's have some fun with this. So, I have some uh, samples loaded into my pads and check this out. Just by breaking the beam, it'll go ahead and trigger. So, so just by breaking it, So right now it's in momentary, so let's put it to latch so you can see. Now watch what happens. I'll break the beam. And it continues to hold it until I tell it to stop. So this can be really fun to do, do live if you want to have a sample do it like a shout out or just trigger a certain beat. Okay, just to play over again, whatever you want. Now hit solo synth again by itself to turn it on. Okay, so if we look in here, we can actually see there's two oscillators. 
and I actually get two waveforms that I can use. Saw, which is very common, and square, which are very common. Within these, I can say how much I want the pulse, pulse width, the depth, you know, all these different things. The tuning, so even the volume. So let's go ahead and turn off oscillator 2. So check this out. So, and now look. So you guys all know this sound. Now watch this. If I cursor over to course tuning, I have it down and off, uh, down. See, so even deeper. So you can adjust this however you want. So this could be really fun for live music. And just so you can see, I'll break the beam. You can see now. Okay, and I'm just using one oscillator at this time. So let's go ahead and turn on the other oscillator. So I'll go ahead and put that level up as well. Notice I can put just a little bit of reverb if I want, the overall volume, excuse me, overall level of the uh, reverb and chorus, you know, range. So there's all these different options that I can do in here. And so, so now I have a D-beam that is, this oscillator 2 is 2 octaves below, oscillator 1 is just regular. So check this out. Very quick. Alright, the next function of the D-beam is the assignable. Now, this is a really cool function because I can change, have it do a multitude of things for me. So, here's, it's asking me, so when we cursor down, it's asking me, what do I want to do? Okay, so let's press the enter button. That's just to the right of the screen, and let's pop open the window. Okay, so look at this. I have a lot of different options I can do. I can use the DB for basic modulation, for overall volume, if I want to adjust that. Maybe panning, that's kind of a cool one, you know. Uh, I can come in, sustenuto, so I can make it hold a note, a particular note for me, and then be able to play the rest of the keyboard live. So this is really kind of cool. Uh, why don't we do that for you? So I'm going to do that one for you, sustenuto, because uh, this is like an old school 80s thing that we used to do a lot. So I have sustenuto on here. I'm going to play a note with my right hand, and then I'm going to tell the D-beam just to hold that note. And then I'll let go of it with my right hand, and then I'll be able to actually play the rest of the keyboard. But the D-beam will be holding, will be holding the note that I told it to. So check this out. function I want to show you is the bend up function. This can be really fun instead of using the uh, pitch bend modulation lever. Okay, so uh, it's just a way, like I said, to, to bring in your audience. So I have it selected. I'm going to pull back the camera so you can see me play the keyboard and trigger the pitch bend up with the D-beam. So check this out. I hope this short tutorial on how to use the D-Beam really helps a lot of you guys out there. Remember, it's a tool to enhance your performance in a visual way for your audience. So don't be afraid of it. Try some different things with it, and I think you're going to really enjoy using it. So once again, my name is Ed Diaz signing out. If you have any questions, please email me or subscribe to my channel. You guys have a great day. Later.